Okay, so what did I miss? Apparently a lot on this last episode, July 29th of the Mods West podcast, so let's get right into it. So, in the top news of the week, I mentioned, tried to freestyle it off the top of my head because it was on my mind, Roosh, El Toro Blanco. Um, I said that he was kind of in the mid- middle of a deal between maybe WWE, AEW. He put up a tweet about uh, how great AEW was and then took it down maybe because he might be signing with WWE. But the story, uh, according to Dave Meltzer's people, who are really reliable, goes like this. WWE has been, is, really interested in signing Roosh. Whether they made him an official offer or not is neither here or there now because this past week, Roosh recently re-signed with AEW, according to Dave Meltzer's people, to a ridiculous quote-unquote amount of money and a number of years. And Roosh, El Toro Blanco, put up a new tweet of him hugging AEW owner Tony Khan at that contract signing. So there you have it. Also kind of messed up on who Roosh's actual brothers are. His actual brothers are Jarlistico and Dragon Lee, who is in WWE NXT right now. Um, I meant to mention El Bandito, who I thought was Roosh's brother, but he was also, like Roosh, in former ROH World Heavyweight Champion. Okay, so getting into living their best week. Boy. Okay, so I totally whiffed on the main event of Raw. I mentioned the mid-episode main event, which um, KO and Sami Zayn kind of uh, goaded Dom into wrestling Sami Zayn, and then not only wrestling Sami Zayn, but to putting his North American title on the line. Um, Of course, I told you how that match ended. Basically, uh, the Judgment Day attacked Kevin Owens, injuring his arm, which was enough of distraction for Dom to get the pin on Sami Zayn. So now the end of the show was the contract signing between Seth Rollins and Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight title at SummerSlam. And conspicuous by his absence was Adam Pearce, the general manager. So they had to, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins remain cordial enough between the two of them to get the contract signed, which they did. But then, of course, Finn Balor arranged for the Judgment Day to attack. Uh, Sami Zayn tried to come down and help out, but that wasn't enough. It was still technically four on two. And Kevin Owens, who was injured earlier in the episode, or earlier in the night, of course, his arm is injured. We don't know the extent of of his injury. Um, He couldn't help at all. He He couldn't come down at all. So they got rid of Sammy pretty much, took him out of the picture, and then focused their attack on Seth Rollins to try and soften him up for next Saturday's SummerSlam match versus Finn Balor. Uh, Then Impact. I totally did not mention the main event of Impact. Again, like I said, I like what they're doing. They're having like a mid-episode main event and then the actual main event. Of course, I mentioned the mid-episode main event, which is this whole thing going on between Josh Alexander and Time Machine, which is Kushida, and Alex Shelley, the world champion, and Chris Sabin versus Bully Ray, Moose Myers, and Leo Rush. So, um, go back. I explained what happened with that whole situation, but what I did not mention was the main, main event, Nick Aldis versus Eric Young, and Eric Young beat Nick Aldis clean. And if you don't remember, I mean, going back before even I started doing the podcast, um, Nick Aldis used to be called Magnus. He was on the European version of American Gladiators. That's where they found him from. And they signed him to a TNA NWA contract. And he turned out to be a phenomenal wrestler. He transitioned from being a TV show gladiator guy to a pretty good wrestler plus his his he's a big dude um but in 2014 after aj styles left uh tna impact to go to japan and become leader of the bullet club nick aldis was the champion and he was a bad guy champion for a long time 
and in 2014 it was actually Eric Young who they TNA finally gave a break to because Eric Young was a TNA Impact original finally gave him his break and he beat Magnus Nick Aldis back then in 2014 for his first world title run in what was then TNA which is now Impact Wrestling so Eric Young beat Nick Aldis clean and after the match, you didn't see anything more of Nick Aldis. And uh, like I've been saying for the past couple of episodes, it's rumored that WWE wants him to come work for them. And um, the episodes for Impact are actually taped on a Sunday. So by this time, um, Nick Aldis could already be on his way to WWE. Uh, so the ending of the main event was basically... Um, Eric Young celebrating the victory he was attacked by the design Diener and Khan who basically jumped him out of the group about nine months ago we hadn't seen from him we hadn't heard from him since he returned as part of Team Canada with Scott Demore um, as part of uh, you know that match at Slammiversary and so they attacked him so it looks like he's going to be fighting his former team the design going forward like I said, Nick Aldis doesn't seem like there's anything planned. He's not feuding with anybody, not connected to anything. So he's probably taking off for WWE. We'll keep you posted on that. Also, Ziggy Dice, another wrestler that was rumored to be leaving Impact Wrestling for other places, had a match with his, um, with his guy, Johnny Swinger, where the loser leaves Impact. He lost that match. So Johnny Swinger, is pro not Johnny Swinger, but Ziggy Dice will probably be on the move too. Keep you posted on that. And on top of all of that, I never even mentioned who was living their best week. So because of that, I am going to give it to Raw because of the Judgment Day and because of Dominic Mysterio and because of what the Judgment Day has been doing. I mean, I know the Judgment Day isn't Finn Balor's creation like the bullet club but finn balor is leading and taking over leadership of the judgment day and they're way outperforming with just the four of them damian priest finn dominic mysterio rhea ripley they're outperforming um by leaps and bounds on monday night raw and other shows they've actually been on three shows in one week they've been on raw nxt and SmackDown, so they're they're a Raw group, so I have to give it to Raw. Now, if um, if Better Than You, Bebe was involved in, really in AEW this week, I would have given it to one of the AEW shows because the combination of Adam Cole and MJF is it's amazing. So probably I would say look for maybe an AEW show next week to be living its best week because they there is the title defense actually um it actually already happened um ftr um did actually defend so we don't know what happened i haven't even seen saturday's collision because remember i start out the week with collision from last week basically so we'll see so i'm gonna watch it when i get back to the crib and uh, that's gonna start out next week's episode of the podcast also in Mott's West Sports, I mentioned that Jeannie Buss said in an interview on Thursday that LeBron's jersey, Laker jersey, will be uh, retired when he goes into the Hall of Fame. And I said, the question is which jersey, the number six or the number 23? And I said that everybody figures it's probably going to be the number 23. I didn't mention why. The why is because uh, LeBron is going back to number 23 because he's giving up number six to honor Bill Russell and Bill Russell's jersey number six is going to be retired soon coming up so because of that we figure it's going to be LeBron's number 23 Laker jersey that's going to be retired so the question is after that will he or does he deserve a statue at Staples Center a lot of you Laker fans are hating and I hate that I hate you Laker fans are hating and um LeBron transcends, I guess, because he transcends basketball and he's 
an American icon and not a Laker icon like Kobe or Magic. Okay, I get it. But the the people that called up this week to ESPN to say whether or not he deserves a statue were just hating on LeBron. They weren't saying that he doesn't have enough Laker history or enough Laker involvement. They were just hating on LeBron. So that that sucks. And so that's why I I, mm, I have a love hate I I love the Lakers. I don't like Laker fans. So that just putting that out there. And I did have some wing stop wings on wing day. Got some free wings. I got the atomic chicken sandwich or the, their chicken sandwich with the atomic flavoring on it and then for my wings i got the new lemon herb glaze their new uh, promotion that they have going on um really didn't live up to the hype of uh, the sandwich it was um, soggy didn't really have a lot of atomic flavor that i normally like on the wings uh the bread was really really dry and just Blech. Um hmm. the wings itself, it just seemed like it was just regular lemon pepper wings. It's supposed to be lemon pepper mixed with maybe the spicy Korean Hawaiian barbecue something. But it just tasted like just regular old lemon pepper wings. Um maybe and it maybe I thought it took a while for me to go pick them up, so maybe the everything got kind of cold, maybe. I thought about that. That may have had something to do with it, but the saving grace was their ranch. Um, Wingstop's ranch is their best kept secret. I normally go for blue cheese all the time, but when it comes to Wingstop, um, you know, someone put me onto their ranch dressing, and so I got extra ranch, and luckily I had a salad in the refrigerator that I put it over um or that i put the ranch over that was bomb that was the saving grace of the whole wing meal so of the whole wing stop meal the ranch over my salad was the best part so that being said um hope y'all have a great weekend and hopefully y'all tune in next time and don't forget next episode of the vlog i'm gonna be showing you how to make la's or mexico's birria tacos mm -hmm.